Hi, my name is Jana Bika and I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford and the Alan Turing Institute. In this tutorial, I'll talk about machine learning methods for causal inference and in particular on how to estimate individualized treatment effects over time using patient observational data. Now, to first illustrate the need for being able to estimate counterfactual outcomes, consider the case of deciding treatment plans for cancer patients. We want to learn from patient observational data, such as electronic health records, which contain diagnostic information about the patient, as well as longitudinal information, such as lab test results and treatments administered over time. In this context, we want to build causal inference methods, which, given a history of patient observations, can then forecast what would happen to the patient if we assign to them a particular treatment or sequence of treatments in the future. To further motivate this, in this diagram, we illustrate three patients with different histories for how the tumor volume has evolved in the past and also different histories of previously assigned chemotherapy and radiotherapy treatments. For each patient, based on their history, we want to be able to decide things such as what is the best future treatment plan, when to give the next treatment, or when to stop the treatment, for instance, if it becomes too toxic. To be able to make such decisions, we want to develop a method that can estimate counterfactual outcomes for each patient under an intended sequence of future treatments. And as I was mentioning, such causal inference methods are trained on observational data, where for each patient we only observe what has happened to them under the factual given treatment. However, to provide clinical decision support, we need to estimate counterfactual outcomes, that is what would have happened to the patient if a different sequence of treatments is given to them. And by estimating these counterfactual outcomes for each patient, we can then make more complex treatment decisions by determining which treatment plan leads to the best patient outcome, which in this case is the smallest tumor volume. So these causal estimates of treatment effects over time can be used to determine when is the optimal time to treat a patient, when to stop a treatment plan, and which sequence of treatments to use. Since we want to leverage on original patient observational data from electronic health records, I will first describe in more detail the structure of such data to so set out our problem formalism. So for each patient, we observe static patient features V, such as diagnostic information. Moreover, at each time step, we observe time-dependent features X and time-dependent treatments A. And here we consider that at each time step, each patient can be assigned one of K possible treatments. And all of these form the patient history H. And in addition, in the observational data, we also have the factual outcome Y of the patient for the treatment AT given a time step T. So we work in the Neyman Rubin potential outcomes framework, which was extended by Robbins and Herdan to account for time varying treatments. So using observational data, our aim is to estimate all potential outcomes Y, both factual and counterfactual, under an intended sequence of future treatments from time step T to time step T plus tau minus one, Condition on the patient history at time step T. In this example here, say we have observed how the tumor volume of the patient has changed in the past according to the treatments given at a time step T1 to T4. Now assume we are at time step T5 and we want to decide on a treatment plan for the next three time steps that would result in the lowest tumor volume at the end. To be able to do this, we can build causal inference methods that can estimate these potential outcomes for the patient under different treatment plans condition on the observed history. So to be able to identify these potential outcomes from the observational data, we make the sequential overlap assumption and the sequential stroke ignorability assumption. Sequential overlap means that each time step, each treatment has a non-zero probability. And sequential stroke ignorability means that, um, that there are no hidden confounders, which means that each time step, we observe all of the patient covariates that can affect the treatment assignment and future potential outcomes. And here, y a greater than t means any potential outcome for a treatment plan starting at time step t. Note that this assumption is untestable in practice and domain knowledge is needed to assess its validity. Now, estimating counterfactual patient outcomes over time is challenging due to the presence of time-dependent confounders in observational data sets. Time-dependent confounders are patient covariates that affect the treatment assignments and are themselves affected by past treatments. So for instance, imagine a patient is given treatment A1 when a certain patient covariate, let's say white blood cell count, has been outside of normal range values for a while. Now also imagine that white blood cell count itself is affected by the past administration of a different treatment A0. Now if this patient is more likely to die without adjusting for a time-dependent confounding bias, for instance the changes in white blood cell count over time, we could incorrectly conclude that treatment A1 is harmful to the patient. 
Now, to make this even more challenging, estimating the effect of a different sequence of treatments on the patient outcome Y2 would require not only adjusting for the bias at the current time step in treatment A1, but also for the bias introduced by the previous application of the treatment A0. So using standard supervised learning methods will be biased by the treatment assignment policy present in the observational data set and will not be able to generalize well to changes in the treatment policy in order to generate counterfactuals. So in order to remove this confounding bias, we need to disentangle the causal effects of the treatments from the causal effects of the confounders. So current methods for handling the time-dependent confounding bias are based on marginal structure models and use inverse probability of treatment weighting. In particular, such methods learn the propensity weight of assigning treatments conditioned on the patient history and use these propensity weights to weight the loss function for training the predictive models for estimating counterfactual outcomes. And through inverse probability of treatment weighting, these methods create a pseudo-population where the treatment probability no longer depends on the patient covariates. In this pseudo-population, the counterfactual estimates are unbiased. So the original paper for modern structure models uses linear methods such as logistic regression and linear regression for estimating the propensity weights and the potential outcomes. A more recent paper proposes a recurrent marginal structural networks, which use recurrent neural networks to estimate the propensity scores and the patient outcomes. And recurrent marginal structural networks use recurrent neural networks to estimate the probability of the treatment time step t given the past history of treatment and also the probability of treatment time step t given the entire patient history. And these are then used to compute stabilized propensity weights. And these stabilized propensity weights are then used to weight the loss function of a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model that can forecast counterfactual trajectories. So using inverse probability of treatment weighting may result in high variance estimates due to extreme weights and is also numerically unstable when the treatment probabilities are very small. So in our work, we introduce a counterfactual recurrent network model, and we propose instead building treatment invariant representations that can break the association between patient history and treatment assignments. So each time step T, we build a representation of the patient history that is invariant to, to the assigned treatment. And using this representation, we can then obtain unbiased estimates of the counterfactual outcomes. Our model, the counterfactual recurrent network, is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model capable of estimating for each patient potential outcomes for intended sequences of future treatments, conditioned on the patient history. And to handle the bias from time-dependent confounders, we build each time the balancing representation of the patient history through domain adversarial training. And I'll now go through each component of the model. The idea of using adversarial training for building the treatment invariant representations comes from domain adaptation, where several works have measured the disparity between distributions based on their separability by this discretely trained classifier. So taking inspiration from works in domain adaptation, we consider the symmetric hypothesis class H as consisting of the set of symmetric multi-class classifiers, such as neural network architectures. And the H divergence between all pairs of two distributions is defined in terms of the capacity of the hypothesis class H to discriminate between examples from the multiple distributions. So empirically, minimizing the H divergence involves building a representation where examples from the multiple domains are as indistinguishable as possible. And we use this idea to obtain an adversarial framework that involves building a representation which achieves maximum error on a domain classifier and minimum error on an outcome predictor. Now, in our case, we train a treatment classifier using the cross entropy loss to predict the treatment given a time step t based on the patient representation, and we also train a predictor network using mean squared error to estimate the outcome given the patient history and the treatment at given a time step t. Now, to build treatment invariant representations and to also estimate patient outcomes, we aim to maximize the treatment loss and minimize the outcome loss, which gives us the following overall loss at time step t, where the hyperparameter lambda controls its trade-off between domain discrimination and outcome prediction. And we use standard, the standard procedure for training domain adversarial networks, and we start off with initial value for lambda, and we use an exponentially increasing schedule during training. And to train such model using um, backpropagation, we use a gradient reversal layer, which flips the gradient before a treatment classifier, such that we maximize the treatment loss. We also provide the theoretical result to show that the treatment loss part of our objective aims to remove the time dependent confounding bias and build a representation that is invariant across domains. In practice, a good representation allows us to obtain a low error in estimating counterfactuals for all treatments, while at the same time to minimize the H divergence between induced marginal distributions of all the domains. 
We used an algorithm that directly minimizes the combination of the age divergence and the empirical training margin. Now, the encounter network part of the counterfactual recurrent network uses a recurrent neural network with LSTM unit to process the history of treatments, covariates, and baseline features to build a treatment invariant representations through domain adversarial training. Now, to achieve this, as previously described, the encounter network aims to maximize the loss of the treatment classifier GA and minimize the loss of the outcome predictor GY. In this way, the balanced representation phi is not predictive of the assigned treatment AT, but it is discriminative enough to estimate the outcome yt plus 1. Moreover, the encoder network can be used to estimate one step ahead patient outcomes. The decoder network uses the balanced representation constructed by the encoder to initialize the state of the recurrent neural network. So the decoder network continues to update the representation while estimating outcomes under an intended sequence of future treatments. And during training, the decoder uses as input the outcomes from the observational data, the static patient features, and the intended sequence of future treatments. And the decoder is trained in a similar way to the encoder to update the balanced representation and to estimate the outcomes. However, during testing, we do not have access to the ground truth outcomes. So the outcomes predicted by the decoder are autoregressively used in status inputs. And by running the decoder with different treatment settings and by autoregressively feeding back the outcomes, we can determine when to start and end different treatments, which is the optimal time to give the treatment, and which treatments to give over time to obtain the best patient outcomes. Now, in real data sets, counterfactual outcomes and the degree of time independent confounding are not known. So, to validate the counterfactual recurrent network, we evaluate it on a pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic model of tumor growth which uses a state-of-the-art biomathematical model to simulate the combined effects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy in lung cancer patients. And this model of tumor growth allows us to simulate patient outcomes under different treatment plans. And such ground truth information is needed to be able to evaluate the model's ability to forecast counterfactual trajectories. Moreover, this simulation setup also allows us to vary the degree of time dependent confounding and subsequently evaluate the robustness of the causal inference methods to increase degrees of time dependent confounding bias. And in particular, time varying compounding is introduced by modeling the treatment assignments as Bernoulli random variables that depend on the history of the tumor diameter. And the parameters gamma c and gamma r control the degree of time dependent confounding bias, because the higher the gamma, the more bias there is. In this data simulation, note that each time step, there are four treatment options no treatment, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and combined chemotherapy and radiotherapy. We benchmark against recurrent marginal structural networks and marginal structural models, which, as described, use inverse probability of treatment weighting to remove the time dependent compounding bias. And to show that standard supervised learning models do not handle the time varying confounders, we also compare against the recurrent neural network and a linear regression model, which receives as input treatments and covariates to predict the outcome. And to show the importance of adversarial training, we also benchmark against the counterfactual recurrent network with lambda set to zero, which is essentially our model architecture without adversarial training. We evaluate performance in one step ahead and multi-step ahead prediction of counterfactual outcomes under different degrees of time dependent confounding bias. As evaluation metric, we use a root mean squared error between the model's forecasting of counterfactual outcomes and the ground truth outcomes obtained from the data simulation. And we observed significant performance gains for multi-step ahead prediction and for high degrees of time dependent confounding bias. And in the lower figure, to evaluate whether the counterfactual recurrent network has indeed learned treatment invariant representations, for gamma equals 5, we illustrate a Disney embedding of the balanced representation phi built by the encoder for test patients. And we color each point by the treatment received at time step t to highlight the invariance of the representation across the different treatments. However, evaluating these causal inference methods just in terms of root mean squared error is not enough for assessing their reliability when used as part of decision support systems. So in addition, we also evaluate these methods in how well they can choose the correct treatment and timing of treatment. We generate test sets of patients where for each horizon tau and for each time t in a patient's trajectory, there are tau options for giving chemotherapy at 1 of t, t plus 1, t plus tau minus 1, and tau options for giving radiotherapy at 1 of the times t, t plus 1, t plus tau minus 1. And the rest of the future time steps, no treatment is applied. Now, these two tau treatment plans are assessed in terms of the tumor volume outcome yt plus tau. And we select a treatment, chemotherapy or radiotherapy, that achieves the lowest outcome yt plus tau, and within the correct treatment, the timing with the lowest outcome yt plus tau. 
Now, the treatment accuracy denotes the percentage of patients for which the correct treatment was selected between chemotherapy and radiotherapy, while the treatment timing accuracy is the percentage of patients for which the correct timing was selected. Now, we know that the counterfactual recurrent network performs similarly among the different policies present in the observational dataset and achieves the lowest root mean squared error and also the highest accuracy in selecting the correct treatment and timing of treatment. Now, in the paper, we also provide additional results on real data from the MIMIC database. And this real data set used for evaluation consists of ICU patients where we want to estimate the effect of antibiotics on white blood cell count. Now, in the case of real data, we can only evaluate the ability of the methods to estimate the factual outcomes. In terms of future research directions, we believe that it's important to develop validation methods for counterfactual estimation models and to provide theoretical guarantees for the expected error on the estimated counterfactuals. Alternative methods for handling time dependent confounders are also important to develop. And in addition, methods that estimate the effects of combinations of treatments assigned over time and treatments with associated dosage are also needed. Now, moving to a practical implementation of causal inference methods over time, I would like to introduce Clairvoyance, which is a software package that provides a unified pipeline toolkit for medical time series. The Clairvoyance software package has been developed with the patient journeys through the healthcare system in mind, where we want to know what patient outcomes are most likely, which treatments best improve outcomes, and when taking additional clinical measurements is most effective. And basic static data, such as age and gender, and temporal data, such as vital sign lab tests and treatments, Clairvoyance provide corresponding modeling pathways for personalized prediction of outcomes, personalized estimation of treatment effects, and personalized monitoring. Here we present an overview of the pipeline from Clairvoyance, which consists of all of the essential steps in handling time series data in order to build machine learning models for prediction, treatment effect estimation, and active sensing. And these essential steps are integrated within a pipeline with data processing, imputation, uncertainty estimation, calibration, and interpretation. And as part of Clairvoyance, we have also introduced the counterfactual recurrent network and recurrent margin structure networks. The different components in the Clairvoyance pipeline are modular and have structures that can be composed together to facilitate rapid experimentation and deployment of machine learning methods for medical time series data. To conclude, despite its wide applicability, the problem of causal inference for time-dependent treatments has been relatively less studied compared to the problem of causal inference in a static setting. And even though estimating the effects of treatments over time is more challenging, it also gives us unique opportunities in terms of understanding how diseases evolve under different treatment plans and how individual patients respond to medication over time. However, direct estimation of counterfactual outcomes from observational data, such as electronic health records, is hampered by the presence of time-dependent confounders. And these time-dependent confounders are patient covariates that affect the treatment assignments and are themselves affected by past treatments. And in this tutorial, I have introduced a few methods for handling this time-dependent confounding bias and describe in more details the counterfactual recurrent network, which is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model that builds treatment invariant representation to handle the bias from time dependent confounders and to reliably estimate counterfactual outcomes. The reference for the papers can be found here and on the next slide. And moreover, the code for the counterfactual recurrent network is publicly available, as well as the code for the pipe clairvoyance package, which contains multiple of these causal inference methods, so I encourage you to try them out. Thank you for listening.